There's a lot of false dichotomies out there. Healthy vegan diet or McDonald's every day. Legalize all the drugs or legalize none of the drugs. Jedi or Sith. And yes, I do have my grievances with both orders, and I think that most rational force users would fall somewhere in the middle were it not for the institutionalized power of these organizations. But the biggest false dichotomy of them all, the one where at least once a week someone tells me, ooh, these two things are absolutely like water and oil, can never be mixed, is capitalism and socialism. Which, by the way, the symbol for capitalism that you see in the thumbnail uh, that was made by my main man 8-Bit. I'll link his Patreon in the description, I guess, because that's the only platform he's really on. A lot of people seem to be very convinced that you can have either socialism or capitalism, and never both. As you can imagine, the people who say these kinds of things are often quite... Stupid. On account of this flies in the face of just basic reality that we can observe every day. And just to make perfectly clear what I'm going to be talking about today, I will be providing the most basal definitions of these two terms that I will be using in this video. Socialism shall be things are provided by the government. Capitalism shall be things are provided by the market. And that's about as simple as I'll take it. I don't care if you have some obscure definitions and special legalese out of the realm of communist theory in academia, and I don't care if you saw something on Prager blog that a guy in a suit said. This is what we'll be working with. And I'll be honest, I've seen way more torchbearers for capitalism, especially American ones, saying that these two things are not compatible than I have seen people from the other side saying the exact same stupid thing. Though I'm sure that they exist in equal amounts and I'm just not exposed to them as much. And considering American culture, this is hardly surprising. The Red Scare left a huge scar on American politics, and a lot of right-wingers and even left-wingers are terrified of socialist policies. Except, you know, really they're not. The overwhelming majority of Americans is actually very much in favor of a lot of socialist policies, so long as they are not sold as socialist policies. The conventional wisdom seems to be America is good because it's a completely free market and the government does not interfere with it. America's strong because we have no socialism here. Which, you know, I mean, the problem with that, just technically speaking, is that it's not true at all. And yeah, let's be fair, the vast majority of people who say capitalism better than socialism understand that the United States has a lot of socialist programs, a lot of socialist policies, and they understand what they contribute. This is a video about the idiots. Because there are a lot of socialist programs and policies in the US, and interestingly enough, the time in which the middle class of the United States was strongest and uh, most powerful, most secure, more ready to advance was the time where you had the most socialist policies and regulations and programs and the strongest unions. America's home to this very strange type of person that I've only ever seen Americans be. I've never seen any other country where people behaved like this. And this is poor people who cheer on the rich people that exploit them and their labor and take everything from them like fucking parasites, and then they say that that's the right thing and that they themselves somehow are richer because the rich are taking more of their money? Just ignore all of the welfare stuff that the United States has. Uh, just infrastructure already is handled in a socialist manner. The money for infrastructure comes from the government. All the top-level decisions are made by the government. I know that infrastructure in the US is pretty shit, and the reasons for this are numerous and complex, but what I can tell you is that it's definitely not the fault of the way that it is being done on the macro level, because that works very well in most other countries. And this includes comparable countries with huge areas of very not-so-dense populations, such as Canada. A lot of ardent capitalists will confidently declare that it is a factual statement that all of the things that the government does, which are good for the individual and also the whole, would be much better delivered in a much more efficient and uh, high standard manner if that were being handled by the private sector. They're wrong, 
of course, and I'll explain to you why, it is government and thus socialism's job to pick up the tab on things that are required for a society to function, but which cannot be done in a manner that is profitable while at the same time also being good. There are certain goods and services where PED, investment cost, and a huge amount of other factors are such that the free market just is not good at providing them. Such as when you only need a single instance of something to meet demand, but having that single instance of that thing of course ensures that there can be no competition at any point, and also the upfront cost of creating that one instance is so high that you could not profitably operate it, especially if you also consider maintenance. Roads are a brilliant example of this because they are massively expensive to build, and they have to be a monopoly unless you are willing to just pave everything over in roads so that there is competition. You only need one road between any two given points, but if you operate that road at a price at which it would be profitable to do so, the people who need that road would not be able to drive on it. It is an inefficient allocation of resources. Someone actually argued to me once that capitalism is better at building infrastructure because it is private construction contractors that actually end up building the roads. Yeah, that is the government making it so there is competition in the market of building roads, which without the government, where the money for all of this comes from, would not have existed. Literally a perfect example of socialism and capitalism working in conjunction to achieve the best possible results. You ever hear of, say, NASA? They're not a private entity. A private entity wouldn't have gone to the moon. They will eventually be going to the moon, but they will do so standing on the shoulders of giants. They will do so because NASA already pioneered the technologies and built the basic infrastructure that will allow the market to actually exploit these things for everybody's benefit. There is this myth that private industry is just inherently better at delivering goods and services to people because they're more efficient and they can cut more easily and they're much more accountable. ANCAPs will shout this from the rooftops happily because that is the proof, the 100% definitive truth that demonstrates that they are right and the evil socialists are wrong. Thing is, because everybody is interested in getting things the cheapest, there's been a lot of research done into this particular question. And it's just not true. It is just factually not congruent with reality. I'll link an article in the description that goes through several studies that have found this. And as a matter of fact, very often, when things are privatized which were formerly provided by the government, the quality of these services degrades over time. Because there are some things that governments are better at providing than the free market. And don't smile so smugly, socialists, because you are not getting out of this unscathed. This sword cuts both ways. There are a lot of things that the government, socialism, and the central planning that is associated with things being delivered by such a huge bureaucratic structure is just not as good at providing as the free market is. You cannot anticipate all of the needs that people will have. You just cannot do it. People like stuff. Stuff makes people happy. And a lot of the time, that stuff is not the optimal stuff for the common good. And really, shouldn't the common good be the happiness of the individual? Yes! Minivans are super cheap right now because a government committee decided that we, we need more minivans for people because you can fit more in there and then, and then you can save on fuel and, and everybody will benefit. And because there's now a supply surplus, we can buy them super cheaply. But wait, hold up! I don't actually want a minivan, it turns out. I want food, but because you had all the car factories switch from building tractors to building minivans, all the tractors that the farmers had, they broke, and the harvest this year was shit, and so now I'm going hungry. This is also an inefficient allocation of resources. The economy is such an infinitely complex monstrosity that while you can predict general macro trends 
microtrends will forever be subject to chaos theory, and the slightest mistake in there can have massive consequences in a system that would usually have balanced itself out. Yes, you can make it so under socialism every person is employed, but th the same can be said about slavery. It, unemployment is just not a very good indicator of how good an economy is doing. And yes, it is true that Karl Marx identified a lot of problems with capitalism, and those problems need to be addressed. It's just that the solution he and his sugar daddy Engels came up with are mostly just not very good. I love how people will just point to a nation that they believe is run fully by socialism or capitalism and then just look at their failings and declare that that is the fault of this one single simple factor that is the bad thing that the other people believe. Because one country that had some amount of socialism failed socialism bad. Because one country that had some amount of capitalism failed, capitalism bad. Because you know, as everyone with a scientific background knows, if you have a test series that produces a million results, which are pretty much within the margin of error, and then there is one result that is an extreme outlier, you don't ignore that outlier, because probably it was caused by factors that have nothing to do with the things you are trying to test for. No, that invalidates the whole thing. That was sarcasm, by the way, in case you, in case you didn't get that. Yes, sometimes the government will build a road where none is needed. Yes, sometimes the free market will have a shortage of dairy. That doesn't automatically mean that the other system would be better at providing that resource than the one which is imperfectly providing it right now. The economy is incredibly complex. You can simplify it in your head with models that can be quite useful, or with phantasmagorical visions of what would happen if everything went according to your plan at all times. But that's just not what happens. And to expect a system that is superior at delivering a specific thing to always perfectly deliver that specific thing is just fallacious reasoning. The Nirvana fallacy specifically, if you want to look that up, I find that lately that's the, the big one that most people are falling victim to. No country in the world is purely socialist or purely capitalist. America has a lot of socialism, Venezuela has a lot of capitalism. And extreme advocates for one system will always point to the other system as the sole culprit for whatever thing is going wrong, failing to understand that things are a lot more complicated than that. My favorite example of this are the Nordic countries, especially Denmark. Both ultra-socialists and ultra-capitalists will point to Denmark as a positive and a negative example. It's like the whole country exists in a quantum superstate. On one hand, Denmark has a lot of social programs, a lot of regulations, very high taxes. On the other hand, Denmark is rated super high in personal liberty and economic freedom. Higher than the US, by the way. And the Danish people are mostly super fucking happy with this. And the same is true about pretty much all the Nordic countries. Could it be that this is because they apply socialism in the areas where socialism is best? and they apply capitalism in the areas where capitalism is best. Could it be that in fact these two things are not mutually exclusive, but mutually beneficial? Could it be that capitalism is a great motor, and socialism is a great transmission? Could it be that like yin and yang, they are two parts of a whole? Could it be that the vast majority of goods and services are better provided by capitalism, but many of the most important services are better provided by socialism. Now, nah, it's, it's, de it's definitely the other people who are wrong. It's definitely whatever they say, that's, that's the problem. And they, they must go. We must eradicate that thing from our system and then we'll be okay. Thank you very much for watching. I know that to a lot of you, this is probably a super da thing because, you know, you're not idiots. But there is, of course, a lot of minor discussions to be had, specifics narrow situations, policies, and you know, you can still disagree massively even though you agree that obviously capitalism and socialism should work in conjunction. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share this video to the relevant communities, do not spam them. Follow me on Twitter, consider supporting me on Patreon, uh, buy some of the beautiful merch that I have. You can have more than just mugs, there's a lot of different things. I think you can even have a, a string because I just clicked the button 
and where you can just activate everything and it does not matter what you buy, you will probably be able to get it. In that spirit, don't be an idiot. Realize the reality of the situation, that these two things work together and they work best when they work together. And see you around, cunts.